Hello everyone, good afternoon. Welcome to web series as this is the first time we are experimenting with the YouTube live probably we may have some difficulties or challenges in streaming please drop your messages in the live chat otherwise put it in the whatsapp I will look over those things and uh, uh, if something is required to modify we will, I will do that one. Otherwise I feel everything is going smooth. As a first talk uh, I wanted to start with the aircraft uh, propulsion. The topic for today's discussion is uh, propeller theory and the performance which is the second module in our aircraft pro propulsion. We have covered the majority of this topic in our regular classes but uh, in addition to that I just thought probably I can have the recap of those things what we discuss in the class and have further discussion. Further discussion on that. This is the overall content for the today's discussion. We will have some introduction about the propeller, where it is, what it is, where the applications are. Then we will start learning different propeller theories available. We will spend some time on the performance of the propellers. Then we also learn how to use the propeller charts which is available which are really useful for uh, selecting the right propeller. Then we will spend some time on the propeller noise and then we will uh, close the session with the ducted introduction to the ducted fans or ducted propellers which is the connection to the next module. This is about the propeller. We all know what the propeller is even though here that definition is a little longer but it, it gives the complete description about the propeller. A propeller is a device which transmits the power by converting it into thrust. Basically our, uh, uh, when you consider the aircraft, our motto for using the propeller is creating the thrust. So the propeller is the device which converts the power input into the thrust. How it is doing? It is giving the, that energy to the fluid by rotating blades. As the name says that uh, uh, it contains the uh, uh, blades. Uh, these are also kind of, uh, you can name them as the rotating wings which produce the force through the application of Newton's third law. Basically, we are importing the energy to the working fluid that energy is uh, uh, by using that energy we get the thrust in the aircraft here you can see the uh, you can see the some of the pictures of the uh, propellers there are multiple uh, number of uh, propellers here 
on the uh, bottom left hand side you can see the number of propellers some propellers have the three blades some are having the four blades and some are having the five blades we will understand more details about the number of blades and in its impact on the thrust slowly in the down the line whereas on the right side bottom you can see the picture which shows the marine propeller if you see the difference between the aero propeller and the marine propeller the area uh, no, even the number of blades are four here but the swept area is very high in the marine propeller we will understand the more details in the consecutive slides this slide shows the applications of the propeller we all know we all discussed all these things in our classroom and we are just reca recapturing all those uh, probably you all know that the first flight what uh, uh, was used it also has the propeller so the, here you can see the propellers are used for the uh, larger aircrafts even for the very very small aircrafts like uh, MAVs, micro air vehicles. These are the different applications. You all know it's a uh, helicopter also we will see rotating wing. That's kind of the propeller for the helicopter. This slide shows the uh, uh, theories. Uh, there are uh, three popular theories basically these three can be coupled into two categories basically the first one is the momentum theory and the second one is the blade element theory and the third one which is the combination of the above two that is a momentum theory and the blade element theory the first theory is very very simple and easy to understand and it is uh, proposed by fraud so this is also called as the fraud's momentum theory the second one is the blade element theory where you understand more on the blade shape which was not given in the first theory it's a momentum theory the third one is the uh, combined blade element theory which is also called as the BEM blade element uh, momentum theory moment theory it, it is the combination of the uh, momentum and the blade element basically it is a blade element theory but we are trying to have more inform information from the momentum we will try to understand in the next slides so these theories are uh, really useful for understanding the uh, propulsive power how it is generated and these are also useful for uh, designing the propeller for a different uh, applications once you know the thrust requirement based on the thrust requirement the various parameters like uh, blade size or uh, uh, propeller size propeller diameter basically propeller diameter number of blades and uh, how the efficiency of that propeller all that we can estimate and we can design those things so for designing those things these theories are very useful here this shows the momentum theory it's already covered in the class but for a quick capture i'm trying to show once again here uh, this is also called as the froude's theory or uh, actuator disc theory as the name says that here we treat the impeller or the uh, propeller propeller as the actuator disc Maybe in the next slide I will show the more assumptions but here for the time being try to understand this is our propeller and this is our free stream or the um, stream tube we can say stream tube here this is a free uh, stream tube through which the fluid flows so it is a kind of the uh, far up, upstream when you consider the uh, uh, actual disc here this is a kind of the upstream and this is the downstream and we consider the different stations uh, one station probably it's the V infinity this is the upstream and this is the downstream and for the actuator front side and back side we consider the two stations uh, station 1 and the station 2 so there are different properties uh, uh, you, we all know that 
upstream velocity we usually represent with the v infinite and the exit velocity with the v e. As we all know that the velocity after the after the disk is more than the velocity upstream, so stream tube cross section which is required for the uh, stream tube will be less. That's why we will we will see the stream tube like this. Whereas in the wind turbine, you know, that's in the kind of the uh, uh, inlet velocity is higher and the exit velocity is lower. There, it's a stream tube we will represent in the opposite way. It will be smaller here and it will be increasing here. But here we are trying to understand the impeller for the aircraft. So this is a stream tube. So these are the various assumptions uh, for the propeller. As it is mentioned, the propeller is assumed to be replaced by an actuated disc. Actuated disc is nothing but it's a small disc rotating element which gives the energy to the flow. So it is also called as the flow energizer. The disc is assumed to be very very small thickness and it is a continuous and uh, other uh, assumption is a 100% porous body. We know that this is not real, but even with all these assumptions, whatever the design calculations, what we do with this, will meet the design requirement within the error of 10%. That's the beauty of the uh, theory. So, uh, yeah, uh, before going the, uh, uh, before going the theory, just uh, try to understand the assumptions. So, we uh, assume that uh, the actuator disk is uh, porous so that fluid will flow through that porous body and it has uh, some projected area frontal area it's uh, with a swept area also we call that as a swept area we represent that with a capital A and there is no drag of the air that is a kind of the slip we say this is a kind of the slip slip theory some people also call this as the slip theory And the actual velocity through the disk is uniform. This is also not real. But uh, for this is, uh, for this theory, we assume that this uh, axial velocity, which is imparted to the fluid, is uniform. But you know, but in reality, when there is a rotating element and it is rotating, uh, you have the some surface. It always have the variation in the velocity. But uh, for the sake of the uh, theory we assume that it uh, it's a uh, uniform over the actuating area and the received energy manifested itself in the working fluid and is finally in the form of the differential pressure that's the only thing which is uh, um, used to convert the uh, pressure to the velocity and other uh, assumption is the uh, we consider the air uh, which is the fluid medium for the aircraft it is assumed as the perfect incompressible as we discussed in the class you know that uh, uh, as the name says incompressible means there is no change in the density in the entire flow so uh, the other one is the flow is assumed irrotational even this uh, assumption is uh, not really valid but for the purpose of the understanding theory we assume that it is irrotational irrotational and the fast uh, fast stream and the very fast stream and very uh, downstream the uh, uh, actuator the pressures are nearly equal that's uh, e assumed to be the atmospheric pressure and the corresponding velocities are independent values and it is uh, oh, in, we try to understand how do we find those velocities so with all those uh, assumptions, probably we will re-check once again the um, schematic. So what we are doing is, we are trying to understand the momentum theory by treating this propeller as a disc, actuator disc with a very very small thickness, negligible thickness and it is uh, porous so that the air whatever is coming it gets the energy but it flows through the it flows through this disk 
and this is the far stream and the far upstream and this is the downstream and these are the stations in fact it is the um, uh, far stream one is just before the actuator two is just after the actuator and three is the uh, downstream till now any difficulties probably i will pause for a minute and try to see any difficulties any questions till now probably you can drop me a uh, question in the chat if there is any question we will discuss further otherwise we will go ahead as i am not seeing any question here in the live chat i am going ahead here yeah as we as we consider the flow field then I try to understand the uh, uh, the theory now the mass flow of the air which is stuck in getting into the your fruit uh, stream tube is given by m dot here m dot this is m dot m dot uh, we all know that uh, it is uh, given by the mass flow rate this is a mass flow rate mass flow rate is uh, obtained by the rho times a times the velocity velocity of the fluid or uh, that is a in the stream tube and the thrust produced by this this is a mass flow rate and uh, this is the momentum change the th uh, we all know that the third uh, newton's third law and second law second law basically uh, force is uh, proportional to rate of change of momentum so this is nothing but the change in the momentum rho av is the mass flow rate and this is the exit velocity and this is the inlet velocity so mass times the velocity gives the mass flow rate times the velocity that gives the momentum change per unit basically uh, as mass flow rate contains the per second so ultimately it gives the per second so rate of change of momentum and in the other way the simple fluid statics says that um, this is the uh, again it's a kind of the force force is nothing but uh, area multiplied by change in the pressure that's a p2 minus p1 that is nothing but just before the uh, actuator disc and this is just after the actuator disc so these are the two ways to find the what is the uh, thrust force thrust force so this is a thrust force this can and here we are trying to understand and derive some useful uh, relation for the velocities i am trying to apply the bernoulli's uh, equation for the upstream and the downstream uh, for the upstream this is the pressure uh, static pressure and this is the uh, dynamic head that should be equal to at one let us treat that as the pressure at uh, one is p1 and the velocity is v1 so this is the total pressure so total pressure at the upstream far upstream and the um, uh, just before the actuator so this is the relation and again on the downstream side if i apply this is just after the uh, actuator p2 plus half times the rho v2 square just uh, uh, here you just see i am trying to use rho everywhere because i am trying to say uh, it is a fully incompressible that's why we are not really putting the subscript for the rho row we are keeping that as the uh, uh, everywhere row i am saying but the pressure and velocity is are changing so we are, you can see those the, the subscripts this is for the upstream and this is for the downstream and um, as the actuator is rotating one constant speed whether it is on the upstream or downstream these two are equal v1 and v2 are equal when you keep that one into here ultimately we will end up something like the pressure raise or pressure difference between the uh, aft and the front of the actuator p2 minus p1 is uh, uh, here i'm uh, just doing this some mathematical uh, uh, um, operations like subtracting one from the other 
when you subtract one from the other, if you subtract these two, uh, this is let me say this is a downstream and this is a upstream. Downstream minus some upstream when you do some calculation. So we will get the P2 minus P1 and um, uh, P infinite, P infinite, uh, uh, these get cancelled and ultimately you will end up something like the pressure difference is uh, uh, basically equal to V square minus V infinity square. Half times rho times V square minus V infinite square. So if I substitute this in the above equation, when I uh, substitute this, I will end up with the velocity at the actuated disk, that's V1. V1 is equal to half times V plus V infinity. That is nothing but the actuator velocity, the velocity which is imported to the fluid because of the actuator is the average of the uh, inlet and the exit velocity. So this is very useful uh, information which is used for the uh, designing. So it's very, very easy, as uh, I mentioned, this uh, analysis is very easy, very easy to understand. Uh, we are just doing the force, we are trying to understand the force, the force what we are obtaining, uh, the thrust force is obtained from the rate of change of momentum. So we are just considering the mass flow rate and then we are considering the velocities. So from that, we try to understand the thrust force. Thrust force is obtained by like this. So once you know the uh, thrust force requirement, we can work out what is the area required and what is the VE and VE infinite. Okay, this VE infinite, generally when the flight is in cruise and uh, then that's the VE infinite should be equal to your flight speed. So. So this is also, uh, we can easily understand that. Yeah, now we are trying to understand something uh, uh, induced velocity. What is induced velocity is, uh, that's the V1 uh, velocity at the inlet, uh, just before the actuator, that's the V1. This is nothing but V infinite is the fast steam, fast steam velocity and we are adding some velocity because of the rotation. That's the actual component of that velocity. You please note that this is the actual actual velocity. When the blade is rotating, when the impeller is rotating, it imparts the um, um, swirl there, but we are trying to take the only actual component, so that's why we are just saying the actual velocity. So V1 is equal to V infinite plus V. Similarly, V E is equal V infinite plus 2 times V because uh, it is V is the exit. So when we are considering the exit part, this should be equal to fast steam plus uh, ahead of the actuator you are importing and it has some thickness and again on the exit also we are importing this some velocity. So that's what we are trying to give us the 2 times the velocity, uh, 2 times the induced velocity. So if I substitute these values into the um, our um, thrust force, thrust force is uh, given by uh, you know rho a v times the um, v infinite plus v. So that is nothing but uh, rho uh, this rho a v is the uh, mass flow rate two m dot two m dot times the velocity. So uh, this is just a manipulation of the um, force again. This is another way of looking the force. And uh, uh, this can be again uh, uh, by, uh, by substituting this, we will have uh, some induced velocity. So uh, this is a kind of the, um, uh, you know, uh, we have the equation here and from that we are trying to, sorry, we are finding the induced velocity. So when we substitute this into uh, thrust force basically, so induced velocity. So what we obtain here is how much axial velocity you need to give for the propeller. So this is a kind of the design parameter you are obtaining. So for this, what you need to know is you need to know the V infinite and you need to know what is the uh, force, what is the um, force required, that's a thrust force, T is the thrust force required and from there, if once you know these two and you need to work out with the 
the area and the velocities. Okay, is it clear? Hope it is clear. And for static thrust, that means when the propeller is not in forward motion, so still it is on the uh, uh, kind of just before the takeoff, at the takeoff, just forward, uh, propeller is not in forward motion, still it is need to take the off action. There, as the flight velocity is zero, V infinite is zero, when you keep that into the V infinite zero, we will get the induced velocity for the thrust force. Okay, this is again V infinite, I am just keeping that into the uh, above equation. And uh, from there, once you know the thrust, uh, thrust force, we also can uh, find out the power, how much power is uh, needed for the propeller. So we can just, a uh, uh, propeller is uh, uh, power, it's basically force multiplied by the velocity. So that you can obtain by the power at the takeoff, P in, how much power you need to put it into the uh, propeller. That's basically depends on your thrust force, what is the thrust force and how much is the area. So just try to understand here, uh, this power is not really just directly related to the uh, thrust force, it is a power of uh, 3 by 2 here. So keeping the constant area, if you want to change the thrust force, the the power requirement will be more than the your thrust increase. Basically, it is a power of 3 by 2. And this is a kind of the next one is the efficiency of the propeller. This efficiency, we all know that efficiency is uh, obtained by the what is the output and what is the input. So, P output divided by P input is the uh, classical definition of the uh, efficiency, it's a propeller efficiency, propeller efficiency and we all know that uh, P output is uh, obtained by the, this is output actually, thrust force, thrust force multiplied by velocity will give you the power output and the power input is basically you are importing, the, uh, this is the velocity what you are inducing, inducing to the impeller or the propeller. So this is the kind of the input for you, power in. So this is similar to this actually, how much power we are giving. So uh, by doing this, substituting those things here, uh, the efficiency of the propeller, propeller efficiency, it's the kind of the ideal efficiency. It's uh, output by input. So if you do these small uh, calculations, you will end up something like, uh, 2 divided by 1 plus V by V infinite. We discussed this in the even in the first chapter, the propulsion efficiency, uh, propulsive, uh, propulsive efficiency. Two, ta 2 by 1 plus V by V infinite. We uh, understood there. The maximum efficiency is obtained when V is equal to V infinite. V is equal to V infinite. These terms become 1 and this entire thing becomes the 1. But when V is equal to V infinite, that's the exit velocity and the fast stream velocity at speed of the flight. V infinite is nothing but the speed of the flight. So your jet exit velocity and the um, uh, uh, and your flight speed both are same. Then you will get the more efficiency. But thing is, uh, there you will not get the force. But for ideal efficiency, we will get this is the answer. Probably uh, we understand more on the characteristics when we go for the characteristics of the propeller. You can see more uh, explanation about this. Uh, the efficiency established or estimated using this momentum theory is uh, also known as the induced efficiency. The efficiency is zero when there is no forward motion. And when it approaches to 1, when the induced velocity is 0, that means V infinite is the uh, your speed, ve um, jet velocity basically. 
and uh, the induced re efficiency reaches to a maximum but does not show any fall with increasing j here uh, uh, we are trying to introduce one new uh, non dimensional parameter j which is uh, called as the advanced uh, uh, ratio i will show you in the next uh, consecutive slides for the time being keep it uh, uh, aside i will give more information in the down the line yeah uh, up to here i think uh, this is the uh, momentum theory uh, here uh, i am just trying to show the limitations of the momentum theory as we have seen the assumptions when we discuss the assumptions we have seen we assumed many things which are not really applicable but still as i mentioned with all these uh, uh, assumptions still we are able to design our propeller based on the momentum theory and which is generally 10% uh, variation from the actual what estimates and what actual so still uh, people work with uh, this theory which is really simple and uh, uh, easy to understand but uh, uh, the main drawback for this is the, it doesn't give the uh, propeller shape and all it 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 gives you some information about the what is the area required Uh, if you, once you know the thrust force, you can estimate the area requirement basically, area requirement and the power requirement and the efficiency, expected efficiency, and the uh, change of the efficiency with the um, non-dimensional quantities j, which is which will be discussed later. So to sum up, uh, limitations here. I just kept uh, some uh, one more slide for the limitation here. so here it doesn't account for the rotation of the fluid within the slip stream this is a, a very big um, uh, drawback of the momentum theory uh, we are saying the we are considering the axial velocity basically we are not really looking considering the rotation basically when there is some uh, when there is the uh, blade element so it is a, a solid element you are keeping and you are rotating that obviously introduce some rotation to the rotation component but in the theory we are assuming that as the porous medium and we are just uh, giving the energy to that um, fluid we are uh, uh, treating that as in rotation so this is the one uh, uh, limitation the second one is the uh, there is no physical basis why we are um, neglecting the uh, uh, rotation and we treat that as a slip stream in actual thrust and propulsive efficiencies are lower as a result of the uh, slip stream so what what we try to understand here is whatever the efficiencies and the thrust what you calculate from momentum theory are always higher than the actual ones because of these limitations yeah uh, other thing is uniform flow that's also make the difference so these are the limitations uh i will just pass a minute here and trying to uh, uh, understand uh if there are any questions probably uh, before going to the next thing we will spend some time on the questions if you have any questions please drop me drop me in the chat live chat i'm going through the live chat
Yeah, uh, I'm seeing the questions. Uh, when I was asking about the explain the induced efficiency. Uh, induced efficiency is nothing but the efficiency which is estimated from the momentum theory. So the efficiency whatever we are discussing uh, P out by P in from the momentum theory whatever we are doing. So that's all uh, called as the induced efficiency. The second question I am seeing from the uh, Surya sir, uh, it's about the in reality the number of blades is infinite but in the theory we are assuming that as the continuous disk, what are the implications? Uh, as we discussed, here we don't really consider the disk or the blade, we uh, disk, or, uh, disk in the sense of blades, uh, number of blades we are not considering. And we are just treating that there is some ener uh, fluid energizer. We are just one. Uh, there is some way to giving the energy to the fluid, and that energy is uh, causing the changes in the pressure. Uh, implications is uh, in reality it is not. So because of that, the efficiencies are the um, um, the force which is obtained from the momentum theory it's the always higher than the reality so you need to have you need to have some scaling actually you need to reduce the uh, efficiency of the force estimated from the momentum theory so that's the implication here Uh, is there any other questions? If there are no further questions, probably we will continue some more time. The next theory is the uh, blade element theory. As the name says, it's a blade. So this is a, uh, it's a more uh, easier to understand the uh, blade here actually. Propeller is a blade basically. So here, in this theory what we consider is, we have the blade and which is uh, made of the aerofile shapes. It is, uh, we assume that a series of aerofile shapes are kept and whose uh, lift coefficient and the drag, coefficient, uh, drag characteristics are known. So we are trying to take the lot of aerofiles whose CL and the CD characteristics are known. So in practice what we are trying to say is uh, a large number of different aerofiles are used to make up one propeller blade. And here we try to understand from the aerodynamic point of view. It is um, um, more related with the lift and the drag characteristics. Okay. Here, uh, yeah. Now uh, in the blade element theory, uh, we assume there is a blade here. But first we will uh, concentrate on the one blade. We don't uh, uh, take the interaction from the other blade. We will try to take, uh, this is a propeller and it has the uh, three blades here and we are, let us consider, this is the propeller and uh, uh, we are uh, taking a small section uh, which is with a small radius, uh, uh, delta radius dr. When you put it in the other way, other direction, so here you will see the that shape of the aerofile. The aerofile shape as we discussed, it may not be the same from the hub to tip as you can see here. Uh, there will be generally in the um, propeller you will see the lot of twist. We will understand the later, little later. But, uh, but uh, at this moment keep in mind that uh, uh, the aeros aerofile shape is not same from the hub to tip. 
there is a change in the uh, shape and each shape we know the CL and uh, CD characteristics so that's the uh, assumption here yeah uh, here as we discussed in the class again here the um, uh, this is the aerophile and the aerophile has the some small radius which is uh, perpendicular to the uh, your uh, paper so that's a dr that, that much we are taking a small element we are considering and the, these are the forces uh, we all know that uh, this is the kind of the lift force and uh, this is the drag force so something is rotating something is moving uh, you, you just assume this is moving like this this is moving like this when it is moving like this so obviously there will be drag force which is uh, coming like this and the lift force which is perpendicular to our paper so this is the lift force and these are the drag force and we assume that uh, air is coming uh, uh, on the other way perpendicular to the paper so this is the axial velocity basically v infinite is the axial velocity and the blade is rotating with the omega so that omega is the velocity here so this is the axial velocity of the uh, fluid that is nothing but air and this is with uh, uh, this is the uh, velocity rotational velocity of your blade so obviously with these two forces air will enter into the through the uh, air foil with some angle and this is the resultant velocity vr vr is the resultant velocity so the air enters the aerofoil with the vr not with v alpha and uh, omega so it's the resultant of these two and this makes the some angle here so this is the angle made by the resultant with the uh, uh, rotation axis of rotation what we try to cover here is uh, this is the thrust force force acting here actually uh, again it's a perpendicular to uh, your uh, paper this is thrust force but it is axial one so this is the thrust force and uh, this is the uh, uh, it's basically power actually uh, how much is the uh, power required we will try to understand more in the next slide thrust required basically Yeah, uh, this uh, uh, power required in the sense torque, torque required actually. And when we do the, in the class we have done this um, uh, derivation basically. Uh, this is the force, uh, resolution of the forces basically. Let us assume that you know the uh, DL and you know the DD. Uh, as we have discussed, once we have the um, aerofile shape, we take that uh, uh, this uh, drag coefficients and all we know so based on that uh, when you do the force resolution this is the vertical component dt in the dt we are trying to obtain from the dl and the uh, dd this is a dd here uh, in the class we have seen all the angles whatever the angle you are having here the same angle exists here same angle because this is perpendicular to this here this is the resultant this is perpendicular to this and uh, dt is perpendicular to this so the angle between uh, dl and uh, dt is also phi that's all we discuss in that uh, class so this uh, thrust force again it is obtained from the dl of cos theta cos phi minus dd sin phi and dl is nothing but uh, the lift lift generation that you can obtain from the half times the rho times the um, area half times the rho times the area multiplied the velocity this is what we uh, got from the DL similarly for the DD also half times the rho times velocity into CDR CD we need to put for the drag coefficient CD we are putting and for lift coefficient CL this is a CL and similarly 
this is the torque horizontal component correspond to this requires the torque actually how much torque we need to import to the impeller so this also we spent time in the uh, class uh, this again we are trying to derive from the dl and the dq dl sin phi and the dd uh, cos phi and when you are this is the force and multiplied by radius gives you the torque force multiplied by the radius will give you the torque basically and also uh, we are trying to resolve that again into the resultant force with the free stream axial velocity free stream velocity so vr is nothing but v alpha by sin phi and the uh, and again uh, this is the dynamic head whatever it is coming through v infinite v alpha or v infinite this is a dynamic head and when you put these things into the dt the elemental thrust is dt is given by q is nothing but this is the um, dynamic head so we are just putting all that into the uh, dt equation what we derived here dt here so we are trying to put the vr in terms of the v alpha and again v alpha again we are putting that into the dynamic head so when you keep all the things into elemental thrust so ultimately the thrust required elemental thrust what we require to give the give to the impeller is this much and the uh, sorry sorry uh, this is the elemental thrust obtained from the impeller and the this is the torque what we need to provide to the impeller dq so for the entire profile length we need to integrate this is the elemental values and when you want to get the for the entire propeller length then you need to integrate that's what we are doing here so this is the thrust force obtained from the impeller and this is the torque required so we are just doing the integration from 0 to r that is nothing zero corresponds to the hub and the capital r corresponds to the your uh, tip so this is for the entire blade radius and if there are number of blades you need to multiply with the number of blades so this is the ultimate uh, torque equation uh, thrust force and the torque equation so this is a kind of the output for us and this is a kind of the input for us so this much torque we need to give to get this much force so from here what we need to understand is for designing a impeller so these are the things we need so uh, suppose we know the thrust force requirement from this we can find the number of blades and the um, combination of the um, uh, series of the profiles so here probably this integration 0 to r may not be continuous then you need to split into 0 to r1 plus r1 to r2 like that basically so each one you know the cl value you know the cd value and you know the angle uh, what it is making with respect to the rotational axis so once you keep all these things here you will be able to find out the thrust force and the torque and here this is the c is the chord there in the uh, area uh, here this is a chord length basically uh, this is c is the chord length CDR uh, as we uh, know this is the area for that action elemental area is a CDR yeah uh, so uh, from the uh, previous equation we understand that as you have the more and more number of blades we can have the more force but it may not be true for the uh, all the values we have the some optimum values so instead of the one blade two blade will be helpful instead of two blade you may have the um, uh, four blades might be helpful but beyond that it may not be because inter uh, interference 
between the blades will happen and that will stop for getting the keep, uh, thrust force increase. So there is an optimum value, optimum number of blades and uh, yeah, uh, again this depends on the uh, what is the flow angles. So for each one they have the, for different flow angles you have the different optimum number of blades. And uh, efficiency again, uh, this is the output, thrust power produced, this is the output and uh, the input is the torque what we are giving to the propeller, that's the torque power supplied. So this is the efficiency and uh, putting all the uh, equations what we obtained in discussed in the last slides, if you put all these things, we will get something like efficiency. So what we try to understand here in the blade element theory are also helpful in understanding the um, or designing the designing the uh, propeller length, um, getting the different profiles, and uh, estimating the efficiencies. So th this is the another way of looking the. Um, uh, this basically we are trying to understand the uh, uh, propeller characteristics and uh, uh, for the maximum conditions we know that uh, uh, applying the derivative uh, we obtained uh, uh, this is the efficiency function of the phi and we try to uh, differentiate with respect to phi and uh, equal to zero we will get the optimum value of phi. So optimum value of a phi uh, is obtained from this. So this is a function of, uh, but here you need to try to understand this uh, phi is a function of CD and CL. So drag coefficient and the lift coefficient, once you know these two, then you can find the phi value. Yeah, so this is the uh, angle uh, what we discussed in the it's kind of the flow angle there. Okay, so once we know the CD and CL values, we can find the phi value. Yeah, uh, as we discussed, the estimations from the blade element theory is within the 10% of the actual obtained results. That's really uh, very good uh, theory here. So what we are saying, even though it looks simpler, but the uh, uh, predictions what we obtain from this theory is uh, uh, very very useful. The error what we obtain from this theory is uh, around only 10% of the reality. Yeah, this is a kind of the uh, variation of the thrust force and the um, torque, torque required uh, from the root to hub, how it changes from the root to hub. If you see here, uh, near the root, the thrust force is uh, negative. Near the, uh, we create, uh, intentionally we create the some uh, negative thrust at the root so that you can suck the air basically. So here, uh, uh, this is the variation of the thrust force and this is the uh, um, variation of the torque required, okay and this is the variation maybe we will understand more in the consecutive slides but good thing here is more or less uh, same location you will have the more torque maximum torque and the maximum thrust so that's the uh, important thing we need to understand here yeah uh, hopefully i will stop here and uh, uh, if there are any questions, probably I will try to answer here. We will continue in the next class about the, the next theory about the combined uh, momentum and uh, blade theory. It is Once you are uh, comfortable with uh, individual momentum theory and the blade element theory, it will be a combination of these two. Uh, why we are using this and all we will uh, uh, explain, we will have session tomorrow. Till now, any difficulties, any questions, I am happy to know from you and uh, try to uh, discuss those things now.
Yeah, any cam any comments till now? Any questions? Any clarifications you want to know? Uh, I'm seeing this some questions. Uh, Rishabh Sai is asking about the do these equations hold good for the Hantra rotating? Yeah, uh, equations are same, but only thing is when you are uh, working with the Hantra rotating, the next blade will come into picture, and they the again, it's kind of the series of the blades. You need to take the effect of the flow angles there. Otherwise. For one blade, these are the same thing, same equations holds good. And there is a question for the reference book, uh, for the momentum theory. Uh, the For the momentum theory, uh, I will send you the reference book, basically uh, whatever the material we are thinking and, uh, and uh, the material what we have discuss in the class that's basically from the IIT Bombay lecture series that will be more useful but apart from that books uh, some websites even Wikipedia if you see that's more uh, easy to understand otherwise I will send some uh, uh, book references also Yeah, uh, Surya sir is asking there is a bed G equation for the wind, tun uh, wind turbines. Yes sir, it's the same thing sir. Um, the propeller is a, a theory of the pro a propeller theory is the same for both the wind tunnels and the uh, impellers used for the aviation. Any other questions? I'm happy. Uh, maybe we can have a discussion here. Otherwise, uh, if if it is a more comfortable, probably I can take one more session tomorrow, and we can spend. Uh, we can try to complete this module. And uh, as it is the YouTube record, uh, this is available offline also. The same link, whenever you want, you can open that and listen to it once again. Whatever the streaming we have done today, it will be available. You can refer once again. Any other questions? Uh, probably just give me the your feedback how the session is uh, are you able to listen me properly streaming is a uh, proper and uh, you are able to get the answers so based on that uh, we will continue uh, whether uh, we need to take a call whether we will continue the uh, live or otherwise we will look for the some other way zoom might be uh, possible but I feel, uh, I tried some time back, I felt this is uh, reasonably good. But let me know your feedback.
If there are no questions, uh, I will stop here for today and we will continue tomorrow. Meanwhile, request you, uh, I already have sent the presentation to all of you through uh, common mail. You can go through that and if any questions, come back to us. There is a, a question, uh, Ashir was asking about the uh, negative uh, thrust force which is uh, shown here. Basically, we create a flow angle such a way that it creates the negative force. Uh, that is useful basically. Uh, we intentionally create a kind of the negative force at the root, negative thrust force basically at the root. So that it sucks the air, otherwise it will not. Uh, probably I will give some more explanation in the next class. Yeah, uh, uh, regarding the today's presentation, let me stop here. And apart from that, other things uh, I want to uh, guide you, you know, um, we have one more week, but it is a crucial week as per the corona is considered. Uh, be safe and at the same time, uh, put some efforts for the, uh, this is a you know ideal time for you, having some time on the academics also. So, I recommend you to work on your uh, mini projects, then uh, work on your assignments and uh, uh, lessons, uh, whatever the lecture notes we are supplying. Please go through those things and if you, any clarifications are required, feel, feel, feel free to call us or otherwise put the messages in the WhatsApp. We will come back. Okay then, we will stop at this moment and we will meet at the same time tomorrow, 3 o'clock, I will continue and later I will let you know what are the other classes we are planning. Hopefully you enjoyed today's class, let me know your feedback, if anything is uh, missing or you are not clear about that, we will work on those things. Thank you, have a great day, bye bye. Signing off.